Now this side is great because you're generating all that force there. The same is true here. Think of a knuckle, big knuckle sticking out. That's a big knuckle. That tip's gonna hit something, but because you have more space here, more surface, you can make a few more mistakes. You're still gonna hit them with something really hard. Plus it weighs a little bit more on this side. This martial arts class, you're gonna be practicing some basic defensive moves with a walking cane. Grab your cane and follow me. And just like every other weapon, I want you to lubricate the joints, warm everything up so you can stay safe from injury. I'm gonna start by holding it here. Your palm is gonna be up. This long part is coming to the outside of your body and you're gonna make a small circle, like a cranking motion. As you start to do that, you'll see it's spinning. Practice spinning a little bit faster. Pay attention to where it is. This helps with spatial awareness. Most people don't understand the spin. They think spinning, oh, don't do that in self-defense. It's not self-defense, this is the warm-up. Now, from here, I'm gonna turn my hand over. When I turn my hand over, it puts it on the other side of the body. I'm gonna bring it back, and that's gonna create that infinity symbol, or a sideways eight. And I wanna keep the feet up under my body, apart just a little bit, stomach up and in. Start to speed up. It helps with my spatial awareness. This also helps brain elasticity training. It's better than Sudoku or the New York Times Crossword Puzzle. Keep your brain young so you don't act so old. Do that for about a minute on the right hand. Go to the left hand. Palm up. Long part to the outside of your body in that small circular motion. Once you get it, stomach up and in, abs tight, put the chin a little bit, shoulders back, figure eight. Don't skip the warm-up, the warm-up is super important. Now let's go into some basic strikes. The first thing I want you to do is put your weight on it. Walk a little bit with it. Use it the way it's meant to be used. Understand what it feels like. And then, coming to a stop, imagine the threat is coming to you and think of your center line. From here, I want you to pick your hand up and let it slide down a little bit. See how I have that there? Here on the hook, I just bring it down a little bit. That's all I did. I want to practice this so I'm ready. Center line, here comes the threat. Stop, use your words first. Make sure everybody hears you. So they say, hey, I saw that. The guy was defending himself. Strike, that's number one. Strike, bring it up, strike one and two. So you have a first angle and a second angle. And from here, I'm gonna turn my hand under, bring it up on that angle. The reason I turned it up this way is because with that grip, this is stronger when I hit that way. I can bring it up this way too, but that will pop it out of my hand if I hit somebody in motion, somebody who's coming fast. So I'm gonna turn my hand under, bring it up. Same thing, hands turned under, bring it up. Three and four, now I'm over here. Five, six, and I'm gonna grab it just like I did the baton. When I was a military policeman in the Marine Corps and we practiced riot control, someone mentioned that in one of these videos. I've got my hands here, just like a push-up position. Super powerful, you hit them right between their belly button and their privates, and I'll put them on the ground. Hit them anywhere there, keep them off. Create some distance between you and the threat. Now, from here, same thing, I'm gonna go into the drill in a minute, but first, I'm gonna talk about the dog. I'm talking about the savage pit bull who's been abused, stuck on a chain, and the chain broke, where they slipped out of it, and they're running around, maybe there's two or three of them, just mauling people, because that's been happening lately. Well, it's been happening for a long time, but you're seeing more and more of that happening. Here comes the dog. It's the same thing. You put your hands up, make yourself bigger in the eyes of the dog, and then you strike. It's the same angle, but your target's lower, so practice lower, practice lower. From here, here, there's that horizontal strike, but instead of here, I'm going lower. I know this might seem obvious, but I wanted to make sure you practiced it. And then from here, jabbing straight down right into that dog's face. Now, I want you to practice on a bag if you have it, and if you don't, practice on a tree, you can practice on a stronger pole, practice on a stack of tires, 
or you can practice in the air if you still don't have anything. But remember this, no matter what your cane is made out of, you wanna do a slicing motion. That's gonna keep it safe from breaking. If you do a chopping motion where you're coming straight down, that's gonna force all of that energy into that point of contact and it's gonna snap it. So you're gonna slice, you have to have this pulling, arcing motion. Watch what it looks like on the bag. When I practiced on the bag, just like when I was practicing in the air, I wanna put my weight on it first. I wanna to try to imagine what it's gonna be like if I have to use it. I put my weight on it, here comes the threat, my hands come up in a protected position. I'm using my words, saying stop, making it loud and clear that somebody else can come and help me out, or if there's a witness, they see the truth of the situation. You're defending yourself. You're not an aggressor, you're not the attacker. This is self-defense. Now from here, I'm gonna practice that first angle and look at this slicing motion. That arc is really important. When I say arc, I mean that half moon, that crescent. I'm coming through here, straight down, hard, straight down. Turn the hand up, bringing it up, hand up the other way, bring it up, through, back the other way, and then once it slides through, I'm gonna grab those two hands. show you another way to do it which is just to use this side as the striking surface instead of this side now this side is great because you're generating all that force there the same is true here think of a knuckle big knuckle sticking out that's a big knuckle that tips gonna hit something but because you have more space here more surface you can make a few more mistakes you're still gonna hit them with something really hard plus it weighs a little bit more on this the side same thing as before you're gonna lean on it then you bring it here and you say, hey, stay back, stop. I don't want any trouble. Now take that. Final drill, and you ask me this, what happens if they grab your staff? I want you to get into this push-up position. You put your hand, hey, stop, stay back. Imagine they grab right in the middle. Now this is true for all the weapons. This is how I know this. This is the same thing you do with a martial arts staff. Same thing you do if they grab your collie stick. You're going to turn and push straight down the center line. That's all there is to it. They grab here, just turn, push straight down. If you want more power, you always turn your hip to get more hip into it, take a step. I've been practicing, I don't have a partner right now, but I've been practicing the last couple days. You turn it like this, you take a step, immediately puts the other person on the floor. Go slow at first, like this. You go too fast, you might break his hand or dislocate something. Don't do that to your training partner, you won't have any partners to train with. Let me know in the comment section below what else you need to work on, and I'll see you in the next video.